Catholic family. Saint Joseph, protector of the family and example of faith and obedience to God. Very soon we'll be celebrating the feast of Saint Joseph. As you all know, Saint Joseph is an example of faith and obedience to God. And this is why God chose him to be the protector of the Holy Family. It all began when St. Joseph learned that the Blessed Virgin Mary was with child before they had moved in together. St. Joseph was very sad and confused when he found out about this. But because he was a just man, he decided not to say anything to anyone. But God immediately consoled him, sending an angel to explain his plan. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. St. Joseph knew then that this baby was the Messiah announced by God. From that moment, he accepted that he would be Jesus' adoptive father and care for him and his mother. And this is why Joseph is the patron saint of all families. Now, talking of families, next weekend is the father's and son's camping trip organized by the parish. We're going to have a great time. It'll be excellent. Yeah, I bet we win the survival contest. Aha. Hey, are you coming on the camping trip? What, with the parish? Ah, <laughs> forget it. We don't want to listen to talks. What talks? We're not going to hear any talks. We want to win the survival contest. Right. You got to follow a trail of blue markers. And the first one that finishes the course will get a medal. A silly trail of blue markers? Call that a contest? It sounds totally lame. No, it's not. You got to spend the night in the mountains. Ooh, that's so scary. Yeah, someone catch me, I think I'm gonna faint. <laughs> <laughs> so you daren't do it, huh? Wait a minute, wait a minute, is he saying we're scared? What? No, not me. I just said you wouldn't dare spend a whole night outside your comfy bedrooms. Just drop it. We're gonna win the survival course. We'll see about that. Yeah? Why? We're gonna enter the contest and win. Okay, challenge accepted. Your dads can come, too. It's a father's and son's camp. In that case, I'm not going. Hey, it doesn't matter that you don't have a dad. You can come, too. No way. I'm not going to be the only one there without a father. Father Michael, we've come to sign up for the camping trip. That's great. Here is a survival guide for each of you. Oh, we won't be needing those guides. I think you will. It's very important that you follow the instructions you'll find in them. You see, the mountain trail is a bit like the path of life. You have to trust in God and obey His will, like St. Joseph did. But why? Why can't we just do it our own way? Right. We're really brave. In life, you have to place your trust in God because He knows you better than you know yourself. And that is what faith is, trust. And you have to obey Him because God is your Father and always wants the best for you. And in exactly the same way, you need to trust these guides to get through the survival challenge. Okay. You don't sound very convinced. Well, I'm not. This guide is for little kids. We're too old for this stuff. You know, the Gospels tell us about many occasions when St. Joseph obeyed God's instructions. You should read the survival guides I've given you very carefully. It will help you prepare for the camping trip. But the trail is all laid out, isn't it? Yes. But it's not enough just to follow the blue marks. You should take the advice of someone who's older than you. There's tons of great survival tips in here. Yeah, we need to study this stuff. Yeah, well, here's what I think of it. Hey, what are you doing? We don't need that to win the contest. Yeah, you tell them. Okay, suit so yourselves. We're going to show you how to have a real adventure. I think what you mean is how to get really lost in the woods. Yeah, we'll see about that. This is great. I see you're well prepared. Yes. We've been working really hard to make sure we have everything we need. 
<laughs> okay, okay. I see you're well prepared, too. And what about you two? Where are your backpacks? Oh, we don't need backpacks. Didn't you read the instructions in the survival guide? We don't need a guide, either. Right, we're really tough and really strong. Well, it's lucky that the path is well signposted, but it was a bad idea not to follow the instructions in the guide. The only thing we follow is our survival instincts. What a pair. <laughs> in life, there are a lot of things that take hard work, you know. You have to make an effort to achieve what you want. And a job well done is very pleasing to God. Let's all get on the bus, okay? Well, this will be our base camp. This is where we'll all meet up at the end. Here, I've got walkie-talkies for you so that you can stay in touch all the time. And remember, guys, always follow the blue markers. Okay, we got it. It's getting dark, but this is so much fun. Don't get overexcited. What do you mean? This is a real adventure. I'm so bored. Well, do you want me to take you to the campsite? All the other kids will be there with their dads, except me. Martin, you're gonna be fine. Come on, get up. I'll take you in the car. What about my backpack? There's no time. I'll make you a sandwich and you can take the flashlight that's in the car. Come on. Well, before we eat, I wanted to talk to you all about St. Joseph. You see, St. Joseph was a great example of faith and obedience to the will of God. And he made it his life's work to protect the Holy Family. St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary arrived in Bethlehem. She was about to give birth, and St. Joseph looked for an inn where they could stay the night. I'm sorry, there's no room. Although, I see that your wife is with child. I could let you use a stable of mine on the edge of town. And so St. Joseph prepared the stable as best he could for the birth of the Son of God. He probably had to clean it and chop some wood to make a fire. St. Joseph was always working to care for the Blessed Virgin Mary and for Jesus. In the same way, you provide for your families because they are your greatest treasure. What that means, most importantly, is to pass on your Catholic faith. And you can ask St. Joseph to help. It was probably Joseph who taught the young Jesus to pray. It's easy to imagine the Holy Family praying together. St. Joseph raised Jesus in the Jewish faith and taught him to pray to God. He probably also taught him to bless every meal and to give thanks to God for all the good things he gives to us. It's wonderful to pray with your children and for them to see you pray. We should all learn from St. Joseph to have absolute faith in God because it was God who told him to flee to Egypt he spoke to him in a dream through an angel. Joseph, you must take Mary and the child and escape to Egypt because King Herod wants to kill Jesus. Saint Joseph immediately did as the angel had said. God could have saved his son from Herod but he wanted to rely on St. Joseph's obedience. So he set out with nothing. Yes, he obeyed God immediately. And he had to begin a whole new life in Egypt. Exactly. He started over afresh. The difficulties didn't discourage him. St. Joseph likely thought, if God asks this of me, he will help me get through. Look, a cave! You call that a cave? It's plenty big enough for us to build a shelter. A shelter? What? You gonna start work now? Yes, of course. You think the shelter is gonna build itself? But we're totally worn out. 
Well, you really need to build a shelter, too, you know. No, we don't. We'll think of something. Good work, Nelson. Bring some more sticks. We can use them to make the door. You're gonna make a door? Sure. We've got instructions to show you how. <laughs> That's so silly. We're gonna make a wall out of stones and a wooden door. <laughs> Why don't you guys build a chimney as well? And a bowling alley. I really want to go bowling tonight. <laughs> Very funny. Let's see what you do when it gets dark. Years later, God told St. Joseph that he could return to Nazareth because Herod was dead. And he had to start again with nothing. Exactly. St. Joseph was a carpenter, and he opened a little workshop in Nazareth. Hi there. We've got another camper here. Ah, hello. Well, this is fantastic. If you move fast, you should catch up with your friends. Okay, Martin. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good time. Father Michael? What is it? Can I talk to you for a second? Why, of course. I'm... I'm here on my own. Yes? It's because I don't have a dad. I know. He died a long time ago, and... That's okay. Martin, you can always pray to St. Joseph and ask him to be your father from heaven. He will take care of you and your mother. St. Joseph has a big heart, and he loved his family very much. Here, this is a holy card of St. Joseph. He's the protector of the family. You'd better run along. You have to catch up with your friends. It looks perfect. What about you guys? Where are you going to sleep, huh? Well, let's see. Uh, right here? Under a tree? You're crazy. Hey, look. See what I see? A cave. Let's go. Where are you going? To our shelter. We spotted a cave at the top of that mountain. But it could be dangerous to leave the trail of blue markers. Remember what Father Michael said. Oh, yeah. And what's gonna happen to us? Up to you, I guess. We can shelter in that cave. Right. And we won't have to do any work at all. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Well, we did the right thing anyways. Yeah, we worked really hard, like St. Joseph. Right. St. Joseph always did a good job. St. Joseph was a hard worker. In fact, he's the patron saint of workers. He also showed his son Jesus the value of work. Hello, Joseph. I've come to pick up the chair I ordered. Is that it? Well, it's... it's just perfect. You are a real craftsman. I see you're teaching young Jesus, too. Hello. Son, you learn from your father. He's the best carpenter I know. I know. I'm worn out after all that hard work. Yeah, that was tough. <laughs> hey, I think I've got an idea. What is it? Let's make a campfire so we can toast the bread for our sandwiches. Mmm, yummy, yummy hot toasties. Are you crazy? You're not allowed to make fires out in the mountains. Oh, come on, man. It'll only be a small fire. Forget it. The survival guide is really clear. You're only allowed to make fires in the fire area. Well, we can put rocks around it. It's okay. Our fire will be under control. I won't let you. We have to follow the survival rules. We promise, Father Michael. Like when St. Joseph obeyed the angel and set out for Egypt. Okay, you're right. Lucky we brought sleeping bags. It wasn't luck. It was all down to hard work. We had to carry all this stuff up here. You're right, but it was worth the effort, wasn't it? Boy, this place is really dark. I think someone's scared. Be quiet. I bet you wish you'd stayed with Alex and Sergio in their little shelter, snoozing in a comfy sleeping bag. No way. This place is much more exciting. Go 
to sleep, Nelson. This is a good place to spend the night. It's great. Did you hear that? Did I hear what? I don't know. Some kind of noise. It must have been your stomach rumbling because you're hungry. It was not. I tell you, I heard something. You're right. Let's check it out. What if it's a bear? Yeah, right. It's a bear from outer space come to take you away in a flying saucer. Come on, don't be such a chicken. What is that out there? to the base camp to win the survival challenge. Hey, you guys. Martin? Have you seen Fran and Al? They went to sleep in that cave. Yeah, I followed their tracks, but then I found their flashlights on the floor of the cave. I think something's happened to them. Why did they have to go and break the rules? Come on, Sergio. Let's not argue. We have to find them. I've been looking for them, and there's no trace. I think they must have fallen down a pit. Their flashlights were lying on the ground next to this enormous hole. Then we have to call Father Michael right away. Alex calling base camp. Over. Hello, Alex. Is everything okay? Negative. Fran and Al are lost. We think they fell down a hole. Over. Didn't they follow the blue marks? No. They left the trail and went into a cave. I read you. I'll call the rescue services right now. You get back as soon as you can. Okay. Over and out. How are we going to get out of here? We can't do anything until that thing goes away. This is a disaster. You know, we really should have read Father Michael's survival guide and stuck to the path. Yeah, easy to say now. I'll set out immediately. I think I know where they are. There's a tunnel in that cave that comes out in the middle of the river. I'm on my way. Thank you very much. Over and out. We'll commend the search to St. Joseph. When Jesus was a boy, he was lost in Jerusalem for three days. For three days, St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary looked for the young Jesus all over Jerusalem. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen a 12-year-old boy looking lost? I've seen plenty of children, but none of them looked as if they were lost. St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary were very worried until they found the child in the temple surrounded by priests. Son, why have you treated us like this? Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary didn't understand the words of Jesus. But after that incident, the child came with them and always obeyed them. Have they found my friends? Don't worry. The forest ranger is looking for them in the helicopter. We've commended the search mission to St. Joseph. I've spotted them. Repeat, I've spotted the two boys. May God be praised. Are they okay? Affirmative. I'll go and pick them up. Over and out. Down here! Are, Are you, you all right, right boys? boys? Yes, but there's a wolf on the riverbank. Okay, okay. I'll fire at him and scare him off. Stay where you are. Listen carefully. I can't land because the gorge is too narrow. I'll lower two seats on a line. You have to sit on them and fasten the straps. Have you got that? Yeah! Wow, cool! We're going to be rescued by a helicopter! Wow! We're flying! This is amazing! Hey, everyone! Hey, look, it's them! We're up here! Thanks be to God. Father Michael, we should all meet up in church tomorrow to pray and give thanks to St. Joseph. That's a great idea. O oh, glorious patriarch St. Joseph, we humbly kneel in your presence to beg your protection. 
We choose you from this time to be our Father, protector, and guide. Amen. Father Michael, we're sorry for not following the rules in the guide. Yeah, we got really scared. Well, I just hope you've learned your lesson. St. Joseph is very important in the history of the church because he was Jesus' adoptive father. What happened when he died? The Gospels don't tell us about St. Joseph's death, but he probably died before Jesus was 30 years old. St. Joseph probably gave thanks to God for having allowed him to care for his son and the Blessed Virgin Mary. You've been the best father on earth that anyone could wish for. Rest in peace. St. Joseph, accept me as your son and take care of my family just like you cared for your own. Amen. Mom, I asked St. Joseph to protect us. I think that's wonderful, Martin. Look, we'll put this holy card on your bedside table so that you remember to pray every day. St. Joseph, help me always to obey my parents, just as you always did what God told you to do. Glorious St. Joseph, protector and guide of Christian families, I ask you to protect my family and guide me as I raise my children in the Catholic faith. Help me to set them a good example. Amen. Amen. 